So good morning. My legal name is Jessica, but a lot of people call me Jake. Today I'm telling y'all about the Vibnarium and everything that we have built for it so far. The Vibnarium is a collaborative decentralized social network. I'm a 2D, 3D animator and audio engineer. And I am amazed of all the open source ecosystems that have been made possible in a large part by version control systems. Every day I use the most awe-inspiring open source software and some of the best software in the film industry in general is open source and still production and not. They're among the most centralized projects owned by a room full of people. I want to change that. And with the Vibnarium, I want to offer everyone access to the tools, project planning, and processing capabilities that make for the foundation of every major game and film production studio. The platform can be used for any digital media creation related activity. I have a background in educational software as well. So I also want to make this a fun learning experience and a playground for people who are discovering the creation and distribution of digital media together. I'm a peer-to-peer -peer activist. So I've decided that I want to make this happen open source and most of all, free. So what do we need to make this happen? Collaborators, collaborators are going to want to talk and have video conferences. So we need a messenger. The projects are going to be open source, so we'll need moderation. For that, we picked IPFS PubSub. It's reliable for small teams, fast and secure. We invented an encryption scheme and authentication scheme. The channel name is comprised of different public keys owned by the creator or owner of a channel. In simple terms, the owner keeps a participant list. And removing people from channels is as easy as that. The owner removes the participant, sends a message to the participants using the easy public key and the channel name. The participants have the ability to verify the signatures on the updated participant list. If the signature validates, the participants update their participant list. It's the same mechanism when joining a channel. We're using invite codes and the channel owner verifies them. Now it may be possible that someone launches a directed attack against a project. In this case, the owner has the ability to simply change the keys and change the channel name and move everyone. Eventually, I would like to have this owner become a virtual role that's represented by results of porn queries. But there are still limitations. We're not syncing the history yet, and it's very obviously alpha software. So we needed something else. We were undecided about creating a farm architecture like Reddit or Discuss first, or what we were going to do. Most of our communication is on video chat. So we decided to go with the Twitter clan. It's a simple little module. You can post stuff. You can reply to posts. You, it's everything you know from Twitter. <laughs> We're using the IPFS DAG API for this. And we're simply sharing encrypted credentials for the latest DAG node on someone's timeline. Every timeline on our system is a DAG of posts and action nodes, a lot of like the recent activities on GitHub. So using this, we were able to schedule calls, have asynchronous discussion, and leave offline messages. But what else do we need? So what we're building next is the foundation for our asset library, a decentralized package manager on IPFS. And we're building an Ethereum-based incentive structure similar to Gitcoin. Items in the library can be shared and sold on the network, and people can offer premium and custom variations of assets that they're hosting on IPFS. It's the core of the Quest network. Since there's a crazy amount of applications for the social networking part of it alone, we call since there's a cr crazy amount of applications for the social networking part of it alone, we're currently building out a social networking framework for this, the Quest Network. It's a generic social network on IPFS on which people can use the chat, feeds, marketplace, and game and app store to exchange services and products of all kinds. We have chosen Angular and Electron as an example environment because we believe it offers the best accessibility for beginners and developers coming from other languages and frameworks. The Quest network is already being used in Python on PyQt5, and we aim to provide the underlying library in Go and wherever possible in Rust as well. Our example app can be built for every major operating system and run seamlessly in the browser directly from IPFS. I'm the lead maintainer of a render farm, so when we fork into the Vibnarium, oh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't skip the slides fast enough. 
I'm the lead maintainer of a Renda farm. So when we fork into the Vibnarium, we also want to offer decentralized processing capabilities. This allows teams to use their processing power for rendering scenes and assets. Additional computing power can be bought on market and added to a project into Flex. I'm also working on an FFmpeg WebAssembly based online video and audio sequencer, and eventually we'd love to offer as many useful tools as we can. So much about the internalities. Now, I would like to take a few minutes to talk about the founders and our greater vision. So who are we? We're an international team of artists, creators, and engineers. And we believe that games, movies, shows, and documentaries should all be open. I'd like to especially thank Joppe Molinar and Jennifer Sizer and Steiner Badari for their contributions and their work for the Quest Network. Yeah. That's it. Please consider supporting us. We're always looking for help. Buy us a coffee. And we love to build a nonprofit for this project. If you know anything about that and you can help, sure. We're happy to be helped. Thank you for your time.